What's up? In today's video, we're gonna be in the city with city folks. We're gonna be skating with my friend Lee Hayes. And I'll have a link to his social media in the description below. But hopefully he's gonna share his story with us today. I remember when I first started skating with you, I remember you had a broken leg, you, you rolled into Kroger, put beer on your lap, Savage. rolled out. Savage. I remember <laughs> trying to film a video of you and having to sit there for an hour censoring out every F word in the video. Bruh. And we just got That's through crazy. that whole video without any profanity. That's you know? Yeah. Because it sounds like God really changed you. You know, sure. he really did something to you. For, for sure. sure. For sure. It's funny, we at the big blue building right here and uh, this is where skateboarding uh, began for me. I was born in Louisville, but I didn't skateboard in Louisville. I was born there. My mom had a you know, rough life living in the projects. You know, she addicted to drugs, moving from foster home to foster home. And I tell people all the time, if I would, if I would have stayed in Louisville, I would have became a thug, because that was my surroundings. That's all I knew. But you know, my mama wanted better for us, so she moved us uh, to Lexington to, to work on her recovery. And you know, my skateboarding career started at uh, Taste Creek High School. Um, I was playing football, 2000, late 1999, I believe, and I was tired of playing football. And I saw somebody literally just doing board slides on a curve, and I was just like, I think I want to do that. And so I picked up a skateboard. Um, uh, his name was Russell Greer. For those that may or may not know him, uh, he gave me my first board. Fast forward in my mid-20s, uh, I, I started a company with somebody, uh, with my buddy named uh, uh, Lamar Rice City. We, uh, we traveled around the country and started Games Escape, but spell out your city. Rise City, you know, it was it was an amazing concept, but you know through through that aspect of me doing that and This is pre-internet. It was 2003 2004 5 6 7. I ended up getting sponsored by plan B uh, FKD bearing silver trucks uh, flow for falling shoes and some other brands that like top tier brands that when I skated for the voice skate shop So I was getting hooked up by them and so that's when my head got big. I thought I was the man getting flow, getting all this stuff for these companies. I thought, and this was pre-internet. You know, I, I tell people they got this in, uh, IG and TikTok now. If I had that back in the day, I'd probably have a million followers. But I did all of that. You know, my head was big. I was skating. I was skating. So I was getting product. And this is where stuff got really bad in my life. Probably like late 2008, 2009, uh, I was getting product for the void. In my head, you know, I did invoices. And you know, I wasn't, I felt like I wasn't getting what I wrote down on the invoices when it was MySpace. And I was uh, taking stuff from actually the Voice Skate Shop. And so when I was stealing, I was stealing from Voice Skate Shop, I was young and I was like, this is mine. And that's where my head went to. And like, you know, it, it, I ended up just like, ended up just taking uh, stuff from the Void. And um, yeah, so me stealing from the Voice Skate Shop really kind of like ended my skate career. Uh, Reese Smalls, you know, told him that I was a thief and all this, and which I was at the time. I, in my head, I had to get it how I lived, and it was me getting my boards and my stuff back. So after I got kicked off the void, lost all my sponsors for stealing, that's when alcohol became my friend. Because like a lot of people in Lexington like kind of like turned on me. And, it, it, and so it, and this was when I was like 24 to like, 29 and I was lost out here like skating for no purpose. I had no sponsors. It, it sucked You know people didn't like me, but I still love skateboarding, you know Like and then I, I got stuck into the party scene because people didn't like me because I was a thief I was labeled as a thief and so I had to deal with that and had to go through that because in my head I thought I was doing it for me, but in retrospect I was stealing so it took me down a real dark path of just drugs and alcohol and partying. You know, I stopped skateboarding, had a son, thought that was gonna get my life together, which it didn't. It, it, it made me drink more and more because I didn't know who I was. I lost my identity because I didn't have no sponsors. That's what skateboarding was back in the early 2000s, getting sponsored. So, flash forward in my mid thirties, I'm at Woodland. And Woodland is where it's like when you're 30, 35 years old plus at Woodland, that's when you're like, dude, what are you doing? Like, what are you doing with yourself? Like, I'm not Lee Hayes, I'm just some 30 year old man at the skate park. And that's when I drink more and, and instead of beer, I was going to vodka and flash forward to 2019, you know, on my 35th birthday, I believe, you know, I was overly drunk and snapped my leg, snapped my tibia, my fibia, my ankle. 
but that didn't stop me from drinking because I was I was too dedicated to this alcoholic stuff <laughs> so even though when I broke my leg and laying there in pain I sat there for four or five hours to finish a 12 pack of beer I called my niece and she drove me to the hospital and at that time they was gonna amputate my leg because they didn't think it they didn't think they was gonna be able to fix it because for one, I was wasted, so they thought I was some bum on the street, so they was gonna chop me off and throw me back out to the streets. It was crazy. And I was like, no, so they just splint my broken leg. It, dude, if you ever break your leg, you feel your bones moving, stuff's crazy, it hurts. So I'm getting, I'm driving back down to Lexington, and you know, the, the doctor told me she can save my leg, so I had to get multiple surgeries to save my leg, and, and they led me back to Woodland again. Then I sat at Woodland again with a broken leg. My best friend, I, I mind you this, my best friend Jesse Boone recently just killed herself too. That's why that's how like I was so distraught from that. That's why my leg snapped. I, I, I couldn't focus on nothing at all. Jesse Boone committed suicide, tore me apart. Bestie, like he was the only, he was my black skate friend. Like everybody knows you're a black skater. You got that, yeah, we homies. So Jesse Boone, and he was way cooler than me even though I was older than him. So I, I looked up to him and when he took his life, yo, I was out of here. <laughs> Get emotional. I was out of here. Like, I didn't have no existence no more. Like, I didn't have a relationship with my kids, my mom. Only person I had a relationship was that made sense to me was Jesse. So when he killed himself and I broke my leg, I'm sitting at Woodland. I was done. But before I decided to take my life, I called three people. I called my mama. I wanted I just wanted to hear her voice and ask how what does she think about me now? You know, as her son. Because of course I thought I, I thought I was a failure. I called Brooke Chupin. He told me how his brother Zach uh, got help, and if my brother can do it, you can do it too. So I'm crying on phone with Brooks. Uh, and then I called my pastor John Rowe. That's a, a good friend of mine to this day. Uh, that was enough energy that I needed to not take my life a day. And I went down to UK Hospital. And my, I called my mom, she picked me up. My last drink was a, a six pack of Natty Ice and a, a pint of vodka. And uh, I sat in the, in the parking lot of the hospital and cried. Like I'm getting emotional because like I cried because that was my last, I knew that was my last drink. And I didn't know what, my, my bad, I didn't know what was gonna happen. And, and like I'm getting emotional because like the life I'm living today, I didn't, like me, me, uh, Stop drinking that six-pack and that vodka and I told these women at the UK hospital that I, I I remember like it was yesterday. It was just like I told them I was gonna die if I don't stop drinking And I knew I was gonna die if I didn't stop drinking man And then them women I ne I don't even, I even and the ironic thing is I work at UK now I see the room that I got sobered in that I had my shakes in my DTs in and I got sober there and it's just one of those things that like I didn't know what was gonna happen, but I, I went to StepWorks Rehab for 30 days, and I I never been sober that long, and I was so happy to be sober for 30 days. And then 30 days went to 90, and then 90 days went to 11 months, and then 11 months is the year. And you know, I still had a broken leg, and I started my company involved because I still love skateboarding. My bad. <laughs> I still love skateboarding. And it's like this brand, you know, represent who I am as a person. My bad, I'm just thinking about like the struggles that I literally been through to this moment today. And like I said, this brand is way more, it's bigger than, uh, this brand's bigger than me. It helps people, it helps me to get to my struggles and it helps other people that struggle too. And without involved, you know, it's just one of those things that like, it keeps me skateboarding. Like involved helped me to get sponsors of my own. Like people still out here, I'm 38 years old, people still believe me I was able to get a camera. You know, I always want to be a, a, a videographer. And started this brand like three years ago changed my life and it helped so many people and I'm getting I'm getting emotional about it because I, I, all the stuff that I seen and it's due to God too you know he gave me that true freedom God gave me that true freedom of Lee you don't got to be who you was you're, you're a different person I'm a different person today 
and it's just one of those things that like I'm married I see my kids I have a dog I have a full-time job you know I'm I'm not 38 wasting away like I'm really happy on like where I'm at I got a relationship with my mom and my dad my stepdad you know, and it's just due to like not giving up on myself. And I'm emotional because three years ago I was gonna take my life. Cause I didn't think I had a life to live no more. But it's just one of those things that don't give up on yourself out there, man. People love you. I love you. People need you. And like, I, I go to these skate parks. I go to Hazard, Kentucky, Estill County. I go to all these small Georgetown, you know, they're building a skate park because I said something. Like, and it's not me, it's like just hope. I give people hope and they give me hope. And people gave me hope, that's why I'm sitting here talking to you. Because somebody gave me hope and believed, me, believed in me. And like, involved is just, that's what that represents. It's more than just a brand, it's, just, it's, it's hope. Like, I'm a dude, I used to like pass out and like sleep in these bushes, man. I literally came from these streets, sleeping outside, to where I'm at today. And it's due to like my faith in God and people that believed in me so much in my skating. That's why I continue to skate every day. That's why I still do it at 38. Because it's like, and, and skateboarding doesn't represent me no more and I, and I can say that much. I can say skateboarding, like I, I know who I am as a person now. You know, do the me finding God and my wife, and then the people around me are helping me grow as a man, and just it's just like like I'm just just where I'm at today as a person, as a human. Like I'm nothing shorter than a miracle, and I know that, and I don't take it for granted ever. Like I, I go to work peaceful, go home happy hang out with my homies and skate and just enjoy just what I do for a living. I, I, you know, no, I don't got my name on the board, but in my head, I'm 23 years old, I've been skating 20, I'm a professional skateboarder. I get paid for this thing in different types of way. You know what I mean? And so it's just one of those things that people get stoked off me and I get stoked off them and I just love the skateboard, man. And if you're struggling out there with addiction, you don't have to take it to the bitter end. I lost so many friends out there, man. That think, this thing that, that it's it's over. It's not over, man. God has the last say. <laughs> my name is Leandre Hayes. <laughs> That's my story. Thanks for listening. That was good. <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you like this kind of content, scroll through my channel, check out my other videos, and hit that subscribe button because I got a lot more videos to come. Thanks for watching.